Thanks, right. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to read you a short introduction in English to Nicholas' life. For more details, see the site www.nicolareina.it. Here we go. Nicola Reina was born in Rome on the 25th of March 1954, the feast of the Annunciation. He was the youngest of five children. He was baptized on April the 18th, 1954, in the parish of the Most Holy Guardian Angels in Monte Sacro, and received the sacrament of a confirmation on May the 5th. 1963 in San Pietro in Vaticano. As a child, he showed sensitivity, lively intelligence, strong willed character, and strong personality with good qualities of loyalty and objectivity. He loved animals, an interest that arose from his desire for knowledge. At the age of six, he became a boy scout in the section of the parish of Christ the King. He had a beautiful, warm and mellow tenor voice. As a student, he joined the choir that the music teacher, Potenza, had organized at the Liceo Giulio Cesare in Rome. A passion for music was born in him. He played the guitar by ear and gave lessons to children to pay for his music lessons with the earnings. He wrote lyrics and song music that he sang accompanying himself on the guitar. His great dream was the grand piano, a dream that it was not possible for him due to, to the lack of space in the house. At primary school, he followed the lessons of technical applications with great interest. He became very good at working with wood, iron and leather. After primary school, he attended the Colbilana Middle School in Rome, studying with good will and commitment. At 14, Nicola followed his parents to Turin. In the meantime, his first dance about the faith began. He definitely distanced himself from the church. He said that he would have preferred to be more consistent and only return when he could have given an answer to his questions. He returned to Rome where he enrolled at the Giulio Cesare High School and then at the University of the Faculty of Law while attending the law firm of the lawyer Olivetti who was enthusiastic about him. To meet his needs, he asked to carry out some work in the house for murder's fees, adapting himself to being a painter, a poster, or anything else. He broke up with his studies, even though he lacked only four exams for the graduation. He won a competition held by the San Paolo Banking Institute in Turin. There, he met Antonella, who had entered the same competition and exactly like him, she won. During the period of apprenticeship in Turin, they fell in love and decided to get married in the short space of a month. At a certain point in Nicola's life, it was 1980, the figure of father Eugenio Martorano, a priest animated by intense fervor, of the apostolate entered. A current of sympathy and trust was established among them. Nicola began to feel ill in November 1984. On February the 16th, 1985, he decided to consult Professor Dati, incensed, and began his ordeal. The diagnosis highlighted a tumor to the sigma. He was admitted to the Umberto I Polyclinic in Rome, where he underwent two surgeries. From the very first moment, Nicola showed exceptional stoicism and courage. Not a complaint, not a reproach. An absolute respect for the pain of others, 
for the work of nurses, appreciation for doctors, to every opposition he opposed to an admirable meekness and resignation. Father Eugenio went to see him three times. The last time Nicola wanted to confess. He spent long nights, pain and sleepless, in that bed of pain, with five or six tubes that prevented any movement, with a fever that was close to 40 degrees, completely sweated. Every morning he offered himself almost with joy to the doctor's work for the very painful internal dressings, made without anesthesia, and which sometimes lasted every, even three hours. His body was open and stitched up as if it were a nighton. The nurses called him the saint, since he never had a gesture of impatience. Rather, he was meek and sweet. Nicola died on August the 28th, 1985. He was 31 years old. <laughs>